All right, uh, Matt. Okay, so I tried watching the uh, debate with a Marxist uh, yep. with Ashley, and I made it through the uh, her initial monologue, and I just couldn't anymore. It was just I did, couldn't figure out a single coherent point, but it did remind me of a recent video I saw of uh, a Venezuelan uh, migrant at the U.S. border being interviewed, and someone asked him, "What do you think of uh, of you know socialists in the in the United States?" And he just seems shocked that like that that's even a thing. And his answer is, "Well, they they shouldn't be here. They should go to Venezuela. What are they still doing in America?" Perfect. And he points around him in his whole backpack. Said, "My whole life's in this backpack." But these are all middle class and upper class people here who could sell a house, sell a car and pay their way uh, to get here. So why do you think uh, what's the real reason why any Marxist has not um, you know, moved to Cuba or North Korea or or China? And I wasn't alive you know, in the in previous decades. But were there lots of American Marxists or other people around the world moving into the Soviet Union? Did that happen? It happened very, very few though, very, very few. Well, I mean, for a number of reasons. One is um, none of those are the real thing. We'll get it right the next time. The second is um, we need Marxism everywhere. She actually at some point in the debate said that the reason the Soviet Union failed is that Marxism doesn't work on a national basis. It has to be global. Right, it has to be everywhere, which is a great built-in excuse for it always failing, because when are you going to get it all over the world? That's absurd. Um, but no, I mean, they, they don't want to, they don't want to leave their cushy existence and go and have to, you know, live in Venezuela or in the Soviet Union or in Mao's China. They know, you know, at some level, they know how good they have it. Um, I had an uncle who was a communist and, you know, he was, he was what you call the armchair communist. He was middle class and he hung out in England and then later in Portugal. And he, he, he talked to talk for a while and he landed up marrying an aristocrat, um, a, a Portuguese aristocrat. And somehow the communism somehow faded away and, uh, he, spent the rest of his life searching for his Jewish roots or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an ideal they don't really want to achieve. They don't really want to achieve. But she was, um, she was more, I don't know, sophisticated is not the right word, but First of all, she knew Marx better than most Marxists. And second, she, uh, uh, because of that, she had a great appreciation for capitalism. Of course, Marx was very pro-capitalist. He just thought socialism would ultimately, through evolution, replace it. But at the time, he recognized all the benefits that capitalism had provided. And he actually claimed that, that capitalism would make it possible for socialism to arise, right? Because we got so rich that we could have an equal society. Uh, she had a better understanding of that aspect of Marx, but then she whitewashed a lot of what he, was, what he said and what it meant. Um, she, she was very much into whitewashing his record. One, one fascinating part was where she said he was, she said, oh, a lot of people don't realize that he was descriptive, not prescriptive, yeah. which I understood. Does that mean like she views him as a historian? Uh, that's what, you know, descriptive means, means, okay, so he's just describing the world. Well, that's a historian or a, that's well, not. There's, a, there's a sense in which he's describing the world because what Marx believes is that it's an inevitable, there's an inevitable, um, everything's deterministic. So what he's describing is inevitable. What he's prescribing is inevitable. So it's not really a prescription because it's going to happen anyway, whether there's a Marx or not, right? So because capitalism has to turn into socialism, that's inevitable. It's not because he advocated for it. It's because of the nature of capitalism. 
He's just giving us a heads up of what's coming. It says. Now, it's not, you know, no determinist. It's like, um, it's like uh, what's his name? Sam Howe is telling you that uh, he wants you to choose, choose to believe there's no free will. Like, then what, what does it mean to choose, right? He wants you to be, uh, um, uh, he wants you to choose to be a moral person, even though you're not really choosing. And by the way, He'll tell you there's no I, there's no you, right? Because there is no individual consciousness. So the same with the Marxists. I mean, he's prescribing, he's describing, but he's really prescribing. And he has a lot of prescriptions in them. Uh, but there is that confusion once you become a materialist. What's the point in prescribing if you're a determinist materialist? It's all written already. It's all predestined. It's all determined. It doesn't matter. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this, and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like. Share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. 